Okay, we're back. We're live on a given Wednesday. We're tax, tax, what are we calling this show? Talking, Talking tax. tax with Tom, Tom Yamachika of the Tax Foundation of Hawaii. He's the president of the Tax Foundation of Hawaii. I'm Jay Fidel. This is Think Tech, and we love this kind of discussion here on Community Matters. So we're in a great space right now, Tom. Um, we're between the end of the session and the veto practice coming in, what, middle June or so, I guess. That's right. Um, and they, they finished, they had, they had their little ceremony, which was incomplete, I think. They had some issues about who was going to come and not. And they had issues about the conference committees, too, about who was going to come or not. And it, it seems like there's a little bit of friction going on in the ledge this year. And yeah. it, re it reflects itself in the substantive result of their efforts also, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. There, are, there are a couple of new things that happened this year. Um, one is that there are a lot of more instances where the House just didn't appoint conferees. Uh, and, and, and so the Senate was going, okay, you know, we're here. Uh, where's our House counterparts? They aren't there. They're not coming. Okay, so are we going to move this bill and uh, concede to what the House has done? Or are, are we going to say, you know, heck with this and we're going to kill the bill? And so what happens when they don't come? Uh, then the Senate has, Senate has those two choices. Either agree to the House amendments and move the bill forward, or not agree, and the bill dies. That's not good practice, is it? Yeah, it would be better. <laughs> <laughs> You're so modest. <laughs> yeah, I really, I mean, not showing up at a meeting really seems uh, unforgivable. Yeah, that's my reaction. I, you know, you've got to participate in the process. That's what we pay them the bigger bucks for, bigger now, yeah? Oh, yeah. They, they gave themselves an increase, and I suppose uh, that means they're more committed than ever to doing a good job for the public, right? We would hope so. Yeah, one would hope. Okay. Tax bills. Yes. Uh, what, 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 what failed, what succeeded, and what's on the deck? Okay, so with regard to the, the stuff that passed and is on the governor's desk now, there's a, a number of things to, to worry about. Um, we already talked about some of the bills that have already become law, there is the estate tax increase. So if you have uh, uh, lots of money... Uh, it doesn't, doesn't count unless you have, what, $10 million or something? Yeah, a $10 million taxable estate. Don't assume that it's, it's all, all going to go to the kids because it won't. The government will take uh, quite a bit. But theoretically, the state gets more money now. Right. With this increased, was it a rate uh, after the $10 million? That's correct. Yeah, okay. Yeah, the top rate's now 20%, which is uh, way up there in terms of the, you know, the, the country. If you look around the country, yeah, not, not a lot of states have 20% on your taxable estate. Yeah, I think we're tied for the top with Washington State. Yeah. But what about the $10 million? Is that common also, or are we ahead or behind on that? Uh, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. Okay, it doesn't make too much difference. It can't be more than a handful of people. Yeah. yeah. Tax them. Action. <laughs> okay, what, what else? Okay, um, we, we talked about the REED bill, the Real Estate Investment Trust bill. Uh, surprisingly, it, it went all the way through this time, uh, which is kind of the first time it's ever made it this far in the past five or six years. Uh, it's now at Governor, Z, Governor Ige's desk. Um, and, uh, you know, there, there is talk that uh, he is uh, not in favor of the bill. But whether that means he'll veto it, that's a different question entirely. Mm, yeah, he has, he has three choices. He can sign it, he can veto it, or he can do nothing and let it pass. Yeah? Yeah, and then it becomes law without a signature. Yeah. But he must be under pressure from the REITs on this. I mean, I would imagine every REIT in the state is going to be on him. They're interested in this, the issue. Yeah. yeah, I think he's going to um, face pressure from the other side as well, because uh, there are you know, grassroots proponents and... Uh, with, who think that the REITs are enjoying uh, a loophole, the benefit of a loophole, and they think it should be closed. You said you, said, uh, you thought that maybe he was not in favor of the bill, um, but there's an inclination procedure, isn't there, where he announces inclinations on what, what he's likely to veto, what he's likely to sign? When does that happen? Yeah, it's, it's toward the ending of June. It's called the Notice of Intent to Veto. So um, uh, but by that date, he has to come up with a list of bills that he could veto. Uh, anything that's not on the list is going to become law. Uh, but things that are on the list uh, can either be, he can either change his mind or he can veto them. 
we definitely should, you know, circle back at that time and talk about that list. Because, uh, you know, I think there's really a big issue of whether he's going to let this become law or not. Yeah, yeah there's a, a lot of, you know, you know stuff out there. Uh, not only the, uh, the REIT bill, but um, the Airbnb bill, so-called, uh, so generated a lot of high drama. Yeah. Uh, well, back to the REIT bill for a minute, though. Sure. How much money does the REIT bill mean for the coffers here in the state of Hawaii? I, I, well, that's, I, that's in dispute. Uh, that, that's in big dispute. Um, the, the tax department has it at generating like maybe three or four million dollars the first year, and ten million dollars every year thereafter. Um, the proponents of the bill say it's more like sixty million. So that really should be something we know about. Yeah, so and and the um, uh, the methodology for doing the revenue estimate isn't isn't really clear. Uh, there was a, a study that DBED came out with. Uh, that was supposedly in consultation with the Department of Taxation, and that's where the proponents got the sixty million. Uh, but now Geotax is saying, well, you know, the uh, the the REITs could have had some deductions that they otherwise weren't taking. So huh. interesting. So it's, it's a net thing anyway. It's going to be the net profit from the REIT in the state of Hawaii. What the REIT is doing here. Right. Not everywhere in the world, just here. And it's only the net after expenses and deductions and what have you. Oh, of course, yes. Yeah. Okay. What about the uh, B&B &B thing? You mentioned that, and certainly that has been the subject of high drama. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the first event in the high drama happened, um, I think, Friday before the legislature was about to adjourn. Uh, they, they, they took a vote on the bill, and it failed in the Senate. Uh, 12 votes for, 12 votes against, and, uh, and, and one senator uh, didn't show up. He had a, a health issue or something, but he, was, he said he was going to vote no anyway. And then uh, the, the, way, the Ways and Means chair came back and said, okay, guys, we really need this bill for some revenue, and uh, if, if you're not going to do it, then I'm going to you know, pick some bills, and we're going to recommit them. So, What's uh, that mean? What, what that means is you, you may think that it passed, uh, but we're going to change our mind and unpass it and, and, and kill it. Oh, wow. So if, if you're a senator who uh, wanted one of those bills to pass, um, <laughs> it could be undone. So There's this nothing sacred here. <laughs> yeah. So, and, and all they needed was for one guy to change his mind, and one guy changed his mind. And they, they took a revote. I think it was on Tuesday. 13-4, uh, 13, 13 12 against. It passes. Oh my goodness! Okay, yeah. that's high drama. It is high drama. Mm. So, so the concern the concern about that one is it sets up a procedure where platforms like the Airbnb, Slipkey, HomeAway, VRBO, you know those kinds of things. The, the platforms are supposed to uh, collect and pay over the the GET and the transient accommodations tax. Because they're handling the money anyway. And the platform would be Airbnb, the, the organization that establishes the tenancy, so that, that places the tenant, yeah? Right. As opposed to uh, the homeowner who allows the tenant to come into his home. Right. right. So that, that should be more efficient. Yeah. Well, what's the big objection? Uh, the, the objection has always been county zoning. Uh, a lot of these um, transification rentals are, are, are not. Uh, legal in the area for which they're zoned. So this, is, this, is, this would effectively override the zoning, no? Uh, no, it doesn't. Um, whether you're doing business illegally or legally, you still owe tax. Ah. That's, remember how they got Al Capone? Right, they got him on tax. Right. Whether you, you maybe know, that's how they're going to get Trump, too, by the way. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> but... The, the, the tax law doesn't really care if the economic activity you're doing is legal or illegal. As, but you, as long as you do the, the economic activity, you, you owe the tax. Well, I mean, it's a serious problem for the, uh, I guess, the homeowner now who was renting in violation of zoning laws because Airbnb is presumably going to pay the tax um, and, and uh, identify this home as in violation of the zoning laws. It's easy then for any government agency uh, who wants to 
enforce the zoning laws to nail this homeowner, right? It's all there on the record. It's a slam dunk at that point, no? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, because the, the current version of the bill doesn't provide for information sharing with the counties. But what it doesn't do, it doesn't hide the ball. Like in the, in the, in the 2016 version, okay, that would have allowed the platform or the, the, the homeowners to use the platform's number in their ads and so forth, thereby hiding their own number. <laughs> okay? Yeah. Um, this version of the bill doesn't, you know, does, uh, doesn't allow that to happen, so, so the homeowner's got to have a, a number and ad advertise with that number. <laughs> and and if, the, if, the, if the homeowner doesn't have a number, that we know they're a scoff law. I'm, I'm, I'm laughing because, because this issue had to be in the mind of everyone involved <laughs> about the interrelationship of the zoning and the tax. They go together. I mean, they're related. Use of the property this way. Well, mm. it's, it's actually not because uh, the state imposes the tax. The county imposes the zoning. The two different governments. It's the government. It's the sharing between governments. That's the problem. That's right. <laughs> So anyway, that's very interesting, and I wonder if that'll change going forward to make it more transparent from one government to another government. The status of this is it passed. It passed. And we have any, any idea what the governor will do about it? I have no idea. There's going to be a lot of pressure on him. Yeah, from both sides, Yeah, who would think. Yeah. yeah. So I, I guess Airbnb... Because, because the, and the, the counties were definitely unhappy. Yes. I guess Airbnb and B wants, wants to see this. I don't know. I, I, mean, I, I don't know if they were happy with this version of the bill either, because uh, they, they were still opposing it to, you know, to the bitter end. Well, they were. But um, uh, the, the, the people who really wanted it to pass uh, were the people who needed, needed revenue. The homeowners? No, the, the politicians. <laughs> they, they, had, they, had prob they had programs oh. and, and services they, they wanted want to provide. more money in the government. Yeah. 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 They, they said, we, we need revenue raisers. I mean, and, and that's, that's what, you know, uh, Senator De La Cruz used to, you know, try to beat people up and change them, have them change their mind. One guy, one guy did, and that's all that he needed. He just needed yeah. one guy to change his mind. Well, this, this, assuming it's signed, <clears throat> and Airbnb collects, that's very efficient. And, and we already know there's a lot of... And a lot of these uh, vacation rentals going on in the state, right. whether we pay tax on them or not, um, then this, this presumably would increase the amount of revenue to the state government, right? That's right. And then, and then, you know, if, if the, uh, the locals have a concern about property being used in this fashion, uh, they got to, you know, get on their county government's case to enforce the law. About the zoning, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and that leaves a single issue instead of a double issue. Right. Um, so what, what, the tax is what? It's regular gross excise tax we're talking about, not TAT or anything. TAT, yes. This is TAT, so this comes to more than GET would be. Yeah? Definitely. And is TAT going up this year? No, 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 it's, it's 10 and a quarter. Okay, so it's, it's, all right, so they'll be treated like hotels, which is essentially like what they are anyway. You know? Yeah. The transient accommodations, that's what you've you got to pay. And so, then some people aren't doing it. So. Yeah, this is, well, this, this has the prospect of sorting things out. It all, also has the prospect of being vetoed. Yes. And uh, the can kick down the proverbial road. You know? Yep. Yeah, only to come up again next year. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> That's Tom Yamachika. He's the president of the Tax Foundation of Hawaii. And we're talking tax with Tom here. We'll take a short break, come back. We'll find out about some other bills that you may know about or maybe not. Aloha. I'm Lauren Pear, a host here at Think Tech Hawaii, a digital media company serving the people of Hawaii. We provide a video platform for citizen journalists to raise public awareness in Hawaii. We are a Hawaii nonprofit that depends on the generosity of its supporters to keep on going. We'd be grateful if you'd go to thinktechhawaii.com and make a donation to support us now. Thanks so much. <laughs> Ow! 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 
Aloha, I'm Wendy Lowe, and I'm coming to you every other Tuesday at 2 o'clock, live from Think Tech Hawaii. And on our show, we talk about taking your health back. And what does that mean? It means mind, body, and soul. Anything you can do that makes your body healthier and happier is what we're going to be talking about. Whether it's spiritual health, mental health, fascia health, beautiful smile health, whatever it means, let's take healthy back. Aloha. You got to know about tax. Tax affects us all. You know, you think you can get along without knowing about tax? Mistake. That's why I should look at uh, this show, Talking Tax with Tom, finding out what's going on in the square building about tax. We, uh, we are not just doing it once this time, but we do it all the time, every few weeks. And that way you can actually look back and see how these things have evolved over the over this session. So you can talk about the electric vehicle tax. Yes. What's that one? Okay, so the Department of Transportation, you know, the, the one that fixes our highways and byways and bridges and stuff like that, um, they are getting concerned because uh, a, a, a large part of what they take in comes from the fuel tax. And with the advent or uh, with the continual progress of, of uh, or market penetration, I should say, of uh, electric vehicles, hybrid vehicles, um, alternative fuel vehicles, uh, the, the fuel tax ain't going up as much as they, they want it to. Um, so This will be much stalker in the future yes. when there are more electric vehicles on the road. Right oh, now, yeah. it's not all that dramatic, to use your term, but later on, it might become much more significant. Yeah, so uh, you might have heard that the Department of Transportation is uh, going out to the public um, to test the waters on what they call a road usage charge. What that would, what that would do is it would uh, tax drivers based on how, how much they use the road as opposed to uh, you know, how much fuel is in their tank. Okay. Um, and that is getting, I guess, some mixed reviews when it goes up, out in the community. Uh, some people uh, go meh, some people hate it very much, and uh, probably nothing very much in between. It would be an increase for a lot of people. No? Uh, we don't know that. We don't know that. I mean, if, if you have a gas guzzler now and you're paying a lot of fuel tax, that would go away. Okay. Uh, so you may be better off under a road usage charge. Mm -hmm. It would be increased for people who have electric vehicles. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. Nobody really ever really likes a tax of any kind, much less an increase. Yeah. So if you went out to the public and say, D do you love this tax? Do you love this increase? You're never going to get, you know, a, a, a really good answer. Yes, Tom, we love this tax. We love that you don't get that. <laughs> <laughs> it'll, be, it'll be kind of hard. Um, but uh, uh, I've seen stranger things. But anyway, <laughs> as an interim measure, okay, um, the, the registration charge for electric vehicles and uh, alternative fuel vehicles is going to go up because the the legislature has approved and has sent to a governor a bill saying we're going to put a fifty dollar surcharge. This is like per year on uh, electric and alternative fuel vehicles. That means hydrogen, I guess. Uh, yeah, hydrogen, um, uh, bi biomass. I don't know. I don't know what, what, mm. what else. Oh yeah, using. yeah, sure. Yeah. Biodiesel. Yeah, yeah, that would be another one. Yeah. So what, what is it now? Is it the same as a, as a, rate, a conventional vehicle? Um, right. So right now, all vehicles pay one charge. I think it's $45. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but starting, I think, next year, um, the alternative fuel vehicles and, and, the, and the electric vehicles will pay 45 plus 50 So it's a $50 increase. Well, what's the... Uh, oh, I see. This is to make up for the fact that they're not paying... Fuel tax. That's correct. <clears throat> Why do I feel funny about that? Well, you probably feel funny for the same reasons that the envi environmental groups do. They're, they're saying, well, come on, guys, we're, we're trying to encourage use of alternative fuel vehicles, get off the fossil fuels. We have these clean energy goals for, tw for, uh, for the state of Hawaii. Um, all of this is counter to uh, our clean energy goals. So why, why should you be disincenting the use 
of alternative fuel vehicles or electric vehicles. And uh, I'll go uh, a step further on that, you know. Um, we used to have a tax credit when you bought an electric car. I don't know if that extends to a biodiesel car or a hydrogen car, I'm not sure. Um, but you used to have a substantial state tax credit. It expired without renewal, and now, I don't know where the federal is, but the federal may be expiring too. But in any event, you, you don't have the state tax credit to incentivize you to buy an electric car. Um, there's all kinds of changes rolling back the benefits of owning an electric car, including this $50 surcharge. I think they're changing the rules on <clears throat> the number of stalls and parking for X number of hours at the airport and that kind of thing. So all in all, the benefits that were originally conceived to stimulate the purchase of electric cars in our state are, are disappearing, I'm sorry to say. And what's more interesting yet is that we only have like 7,000 cars out of a million cars that are electric cars. So, you know, we haven't even gotten to first base yet. We're already pulling the incentives out. What, what does the legislature think will happen? This is going to de-incentivize electric cars. I know. I think they think people, people buy the cars anyway. Um, I mean, typically when you, when you enact a tax credit, it's supposed to you know, stimulate some intended behavior. And then once it starts kind of getting, getting on a roll, then you, then you can pull the credit out so people, because people will be doing it anyway. Well, theoretically. Yeah. I mean, why do you need to incentivize something that people are going to do anyway? Well, but that hasn't shown to be the case. It has not shown to be the case. They're not doing it anyway. 7,000 cars out of a million cars. And furthermore, I'd like to say that you watch television at all time. I think we had this conversation. <laughs> now, have you noticed that in the past couple of months, maybe since the beginning of the year, um, there have been an enormous number of car ads on, on television? They're starting trying to sell cars so, so much, so hard, so fast, so, so vigorously. Um, because, it, you know, car sales are down. That's why they're putting all the ads on. But among the ads, okay, there are zero ads for electric cars. What does this tell us? Well, I, I'm not, I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm seeing a lot more alternative fuel vehicles and electric vehicles and hybrids on the road these days. You know, the, the Teslas, the, the Leafs, the, um, uh, uh, the Priuses, you know, all these, all these vehicles. You know, you, you, just, just, just a couple of years ago, it was very rare to see even one of them. Now, now, now they're all over the place. Mm. I should move to your neighborhood. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if it's a function of neighborhood or whatever, but that's, that's what's happening. So what's the status? Uh, up to the governor. Mm. So, so pass legislature up to the governor. Expectations? Um, we don't know. Okay, we'll find we'll, out. We'll circle back on that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, House Bill 333. Uh, this is an interesting one. It, it establishes the state highway enforcement program. Uh, so if you're uh, guilty of uh, a parking violation on a state highway, and I think they have a problem in Kauai with people parking on state highways. But you you park to, along the road, along the side of the road? Yeah, along the side of the road. Yeah. Uh, in addition to the current penalties, you, you have to pay an additional 200 bucks. Just for parking. It's a parking, parking ticket, so yeah. to speak. A state parking ticket. A state yeah. parking ticket. Uh, and that one, uh, part of that, well, yeah, half of that's going to go to the Department of Transportation uh, so they can fix the roads and bridges, like I mentioned. Mm -hmm. And then half of it's going to go to the county. Wow, that sounds like cruel and unusual punishment. Uh, yeah, but confiscatory what? <laughs> <laughs> it, it's it's just it's just um, very interesting that it's only targeted against state highways. So you you have you have also county highways, no, and no no comparable penalty. Uh, you park in the H one. That's not a state highway. Really? <laughs> it's, it's federal. Ah. Okay. Doesn't then then the state rule doesn't apply? Huh? And that, that rule, so it, it only applies to. Uh, to state highways, but uh, so so expect a nasty surprise if you're parking in a state highway. It gets complicated because uh, who enforces this? This would be the same county police department that yeah, enforces this. Yeah, but they get half. So, uh, oh, okay. Well, there's a motivation feature there. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> so did that pass? 
That passed. Mm. It's on the way to the governor's you office. Know what now. they say okay. taxes never go down. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Um, I talked to you about the the rental vehicle surcharge tax. Go ahead. Yeah. So when you when you rent a car, um, under a law that they passed last year, uh, you pay three dollars a day. Uh, if you're if you're a a, a, a local with a Hawaii driver's license, mm -hmm. and you pay five dollars a day if you're not. You don't have a Hawaii's driver's license. That's right. Why do I feel that creepy feeling of unconstitutional in my my mind? Uh, it is unconstitutional. So, so that this year they changed it uh, so that um, everybody's now going to pay the five. <laughs> There's a solution. Yeah, it, it solves the discrimination. <laughs> you, you were complaining about you know about. <laughs> The other guys, now you can, you can have the same treatment. That's right. <laughs> exactly. That, and that's on the way to the governor, too? Yeah. The, it's effective upon approval. So as soon as he signs it into law, then, uh, then it's five for everybody. They never go up. I mean, never they, go down. They never sorry. go down. Okay. Um, did we talk about uh, uh, partnership withholding? No, let's talk about that now. Okay. So... Uh, if you are an S-corporation and you have out-of-state shareholders, uh, you, you, you as the partnership or the, the, the um, S-corporation are supposed to withhold income tax on whatever is distributed to your shareholders. Um, and this bill applies the same rules to, uh, actually a little bit harsher rule, to uh, partners in a partnership or beneficiaries of a trust get distributions from the trust okay. um, and all to, to collect the state income tax estimated tax estimated tax yeah it's a, it's a withholding mechanism so uh, if if you're a bit uh, a beneficiary or a partner in a partnership you get a k1 with Hawaii income so you're supposed to file a Hawaii return uh, I guess some people don't so um, in that case the there's no option about it you must yeah, the partnership must. The partnership must, and since it's a partner that's going to receive the income, the partner has to pay tax on that distribution, am I right? Yes. Mid-year? No, 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 at the regular time, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, and the rate is the same as the, what, what is the rate? The individual rate. Same as the individual rate. Yeah. And is this intended to uh, encourage business in the state of Hawaii? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> It's 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 encouraged designed to encourage uh, us getting the fair share of income that we're supposed to get anyway, but maybe you know people aren't aren't uh, complying with the so law. So this is an enforcement thing. Yeah. At the end of the day, the tax is the same as it as it would be without. You know, it's, the... it's just like it's just like wage uh, wage withholding. You know, you get money taken out out of your paycheck every week or every couple of weeks, uh, and at the end, it's supposed to be you know you, you compare that against the amount owed your, on your return. If there's a difference, you get refunded the difference. If there's not, if it's not enough withhold, then you then you pay mm -hmm. the diff, you know, pay the the balance. Uh, it's just the same concept. Well, the only the only difference is, I suppose, in net effect, is that you wind up with more paperwork to do and more uh, periodic obligations to handle. Yeah, uh, but but the but the out of state people were supposed to file those tax returns anyway, because that's the law. But I guess maybe they didn't. So now we all get to pay. That's right. Thank you, Tom. Tom Yamachika, ta Talking Tax with Tom here. He's the president of the Tax Foundation of Hawaii. Talking Tax with Tom here on Community Matters. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jay. Next time soon. <laughs>